I am very excited. As we mentioned, yep. are you getting an Oculus Rift? I, I'm not getting Oculus Rift, but I'm going to hang out with anybody who does because I'm very curious place. about it. Yeah. Come over to our place. <laughs> so before I found out that they were very generously going to give it to all the Kickstarter folks, because yep. I was a Kickstarter supporter. Way back. Yeah. Way back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I bought one. Yep. So I'm going to have two. Oh, cool. So you can come and use it anytime. Nice. But then I found out you got to have a pretty high-end machine. The minimum specs, I think, were an NVIDIA G GTX, I can't remember, 7. Yep. Anyway, high, high, any, nothing I have works. <laughs> they, have a, they have a compatibility checker, no laptop. So we thought, well, this would be a good time to rebuild the ultimate gaming machine, something we did every year on the new screensaver, on the old screensavers. Uh, we did it here on Twit. We did one. Colleen built an amazing beast, Ugum 7, uh, that had water cooling and all sorts yeah. of crazy stuff. <laughs> it's time, don't you think, to build another one. But this time, it's not just the ultimate gaming machine. <laughs> it's the ultimate virtual reality gaming machine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a little That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I'll, I'll give you credit. I, I like the Tron guy. That's a good touch, guys. That that's was Anthony good. Nielsen. Yeah. Well Thank well you, done. Anthony. Yeah. Uh, joining us right now... <laughs> Perfect guy to do this from PC Perspective, my good friend Ryan Shrout, host of This Week in Computer Hardware. Hey, Ryan. Hi, how are you guys doing? Now, I uh, just looked at your, uh, you know, your PC leader, your hardware leaderboard, because for years, and I've always recommended this, you have like the cheap one, the medium one, the uh, expensive one, and then the crazy one. And said, right. well, let's just build the crazy one, right? But there's lots of, you know, here's and there's to go through. So where do we start for the ultimate VR gaming machine? Well, I mean, obviously the first place to start is to look at what they have put up, what Oculus has put up at, as their recommended uh, specs. Uh, at this point, HTC hasn't really posted much detail on what they recommend. For the for Vive. Yeah. 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 Uh, Oculus has been, you know, more out there in terms of what they want to do. They even have like a little application that they, you know, recommend you download to see which, you know, if your PC is ready or capable of, uh, of running. Yeah, the, that's the, the one VR I ran, and nothing was ready. <laughs> nothing. Just nothing. So it's a GTX 970 or better. That's where I'm falling down, right? I need a higher-end higher yeah. GPU, yeah. Yeah, and, and I think a lot of people will be in that boat. Uh, and somebody asked me in the chat earlier uh, during the beginning of the show if Oculus was actually going to lock out machines that were slower than that. Um, from even attempting to run VR gaming, and I don't know the answer to that. I I, I don't think they would. I it's doubt something, it. Yeah. yeah, it's something that I don't I don't think that they would they would try to do. And, and there may be some very simplistic VR experiences or games uh, that you'll be able to run even on older hardware. But you'll be more likely, frankly, to throw up <laughs> if it's not smooth. True. Yeah, because exactly. it'll be because yeah. the latency will be bad. Yeah. I mean, this is what causes nausea in VR. Yep. Yep. Um, you know, it's not going to look good. The textures will be chunky uh, yep. it's not going to be a good experience you, you can't just dial down the quality like in some other games right. or you know like you know make an adjustment it, oculus is they did announce yeah. that they're going to do bundles and you can go as low as a thousand bucks that's actually a pretty okay. surprisingly low cost mm -hmm. machine um because the rift itself is 500 bucks the, the headset right. Right. yeah it's 599 what do you think uh, of the 949 dollar uh, machine that they talk about I mean, it's basically you take their minimum specifications and copy yeah. it verbatim, and that's and that's what you're getting. Um, and and it's important to understand, you know, for a lot of people who have older hardware that are used to being able to turn down those games, that that they're not doing it just because they're right. doing it because they really, really, really need that initial experience you have with VR to be high quality and a target frame rate of 90 frames per second. And not going below that is key, right? Like usually we, we, when we talk about PC gaming, we're talking about targeting 60 hertz, targeting 60 frames per second. But if you drop below that every once in a while, it's like, eh, you know, whatever. You see some tearing or you get right. a little bit of judder here or there. Whereas with VR, it, it will induce nausea. It could just make you get a headache. It, it basically can, can cause much more dramatic effects than just a slight annoyance when looking at a monitor. And if you're spending 500 bucks on the Rift, right? Even if it's just Eve Valkyrie <laughs> that we're yeah. playing, yeah. I, it should look good, right? I mean, uh, you know, and so, uh, all right, it's just an excuse for me to spend a whole lot of money. <laughs> I, actually, I actually very much support them kind of pushing people for, for harder, uh, higher end hardware on this um, because if too many people have bad experiences on VR, it could just kill the whole industry again, right? And so they're kind of yeah, being proactive true. of like, yeah. look, we want to make, even though it's going to, you know, shrink the size of their market, right? 
um, by requiring a whole new PC or uh, a lot of upgrades for a lot of people that they really are adamant on the experience first versus kind of sales and profits later, which helps when you have a company the size of Facebook behind you. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. So your, your high end on the hardware leaderboard at PCPer.com, your high end is uh, 2971 bucks. This one's a little higher than that. Well, keep in mind on our leaderboard, we don't include monitor. We don't oh, include okay. uh, uh, a couple of other smaller things like that. And the monitor on this build, you know, I'm not going to. We're getting away a big 30. Way. I think oh. we're going to get the nicest. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and that was a debate we had, right? It's like, no. okay, you're, you're building this for VR. So do you need a fancy monitor? But, no, you know, yes, chances you are if you're, you get one of those if you're building ones. a machine. Yeah, I'm exactly. playing Minecraft on it, but I still <laughs> wanted to be a good monitor. All right. Right. So I, I'm totally behind you. We're, yeah, we decided to spare no expense. And thank God I have somebody like yeah. Ryan to help me spend my money. <laughs> so let's – now, the first question is, if anybody's building their own computer, is where do you start? What's the first decision point that you have to hit? Um, it's really – I was trying to figure out how to, how to word this, and it's platform. It's, it's processor and motherboard kind of combined, right? Mm -hmm. Motherboard and chipset. Mm -hmm. and, and, and most people will go at it as, okay, you go with your CPU, and then you pick a motherboard that supports it. Um, and in our discussions for this project, you know, the, the processor that we picked, the Core i7-6700K, is not the fastest processor that exists. It's not the fastest that you can buy um, today. There is the Core i7-5960X that has eight cores and 16 threads, right? The processor we picked has four cores and eight threads. Yeah, this is so, actually a lesser processor than the one on the Dream Machine. Yes, it is. But the reason we went there is because of the whole idea of the platform, right? What other technologies and features and capabilities does ah. the platform offer with that processor? Things like Thunderbolt and, and faster it, memory. Thunderbolt, you know, M.2 SSDs, USB 3.1, a lot of stuff that will be beneficial to you uh, outside of the realm of VR, right, uh -huh. just for normal computing. Um, and the benefit you get in gaming going from a quad core to a six or an eight core processor is still fairly minimal. So if, if you wanted to call it, you know, slightly ultimate, right, you know, it's, it's, it's to me it is... <laughs> If I, were, ultimate. <laughs> if I were building a machine for this, this is what I would pick, right, right? Right. Whereas even though you could have an unlimited budget, which is what you gave me when the project started out. I did. We I said going through the spreadsheet. The limit. Yep. You know, the 5960X, if I were building the ultimate PC, that would probably be it. Because if I were saying, oh, I'm going to do video editing or I'm going to do other kind of, you know, video transcoding capabilities. Then multi-cores right? would make a – more cores would make a difference. Yes, it would mean yeah. a lot more. Yeah. yeah. Now – why not a Xeon? Because aren't they, I mean, I think they're coming out with a 5 gigahertz Xeon soon. So uh, you get into the platform questions there, right? Xeon motherboards, pro, motherboards that support Xeon processors where you can get 10 core and 12 core parts uh, tend to lack a lot of the consumer centric ah. features like USB 3.0 uh, or 3.1, uh, M.2 SSDs, those types of things. I want the, uh, M. Uh, I want the fastest SSD I could get. Yep, and 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 we'll we'll ha we'll have one of those on mm. on the system for sure. We're really <laughs> we're, we're going to spend on that one. So this is the processor we decided on. This is the it's an i7, four mm -hmm. core. It what's interesting is uh, this is the uh, the sixty seven hundred K. K means unlocked, right? Correct. What does so that, that mean? mean? It means um, that without any tricks or hacked BIOSes or whatever, that you can go into the BIOS on the motherboard, into the firmware, you can adjust the multiplier, you can adjust the uh, the bus speed, uh, or the base clock rather, and you can overclock it, ah. right? So you can overclock other processors, but it's more restricted. On this, it's unlocked, meaning you can change the voltage, you can change the multiplier, and it's pretty easy to get uh, like the maximum performance out of this, right? So it, it has a maximum clock speed out of the box at four gigahertz, uh, and you, you'll be able to run this at 4.5 or 4.6 nice. really easily. Uh, you basically change three or four switches in the BIOS and, and you move on, right? So, so we we'll are planning to overclock. We're going to overclock this yeah. puppy. Why yeah. not? Why not? Because we can't. <laughs> but that will impact our case choice. We'll have the case. Is it next week the cases? I see the case back here. I'm going to hide it, though. Next, yeah, week, next, got, next week is a motherboard. Yeah, we go motherboard, case. GPU, case. Okay. Uh, we get into the cooling and power and that type of stuff, right? So, I mean, for this episode, we're just kind of, now we've put a stake in the ground. And that's really what you do when you're building a BC. Platform. Whether 
Intel or an AMD or yeah. whatever, you, you put you put the first cornerstone down or flag in the ground, if you will, and you build everything else kind of around that. This is Skylake? Um, yes, this is Skylake architecture. So it's the newest Intel architecture, 14 nanometer. Um, it's It's got all the bells and whistles in terms of features and capability. Uh, and like I said, even though technically you could get a faster processor, if you look at uh, you know, Cinebench scores or video rendering capability um, in terms of what the total package platform will offer, I think this is the best option you can get. Yeah, see, I, this, this is why this is somewhat nuanced conversation. Right. You can't just say, well, this, you know, check these boxes uh, yeah. because what are you going to do with it is very much part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. And a faster SSD may really be more important to me than a faster clock speed out of the box, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, is it the motherboard that's determining the fact that I got USB 3.1 and uh, Thunderbolt, or is it the chip that's doing that? So it's the motherboard, okay. right? And in theory, you could have a motherboard for the Core i7-5960X that adds all those capabilities. Um, but the X99 chipset, which is what that processor utilizes, is older. And so motherboards got that it. aren't as up-to-date with those features and capabilities, whereas Z170 came out, you know, just the middle of last year or so. So all of those motherboards are updated. They have newer features. They have new capabilities uh -huh. uh, as well. And so really, it's it, nowadays, it's not the CPU. It's a system on a chip I'm buying. It's much more going on in that process. I mean, it is. There, there are graphics on that. On that process, which we won't be using, I hope. Which we won't be utilizing, <laughs> right? Uh, and and there's you know there's all kinds like if you get if you really get into people that are on a budget and all the tricks and things that that the community learns and teaches each other about how to get the most out of your dollar, it's really impressive. Uh, th there's a low cost Xeon processor that exists that has the graphics disabled that Intel sells for like thirty bucks less comparatively. Right. Um, to the other Skylake units, and they use those to save thirty dollars, add a, get a better GPU, those types of things. Uh, but then you're using a different motherboard, oftentimes along the way. We're going to talk about the motherboard uh, next week. One last question, though, before you go. Sure. Did you consider AMD, or is Intel really the only sensible choice? <sighs> I get asked this a lot, yeah. and in my opinion, if we're building a system, it would be an Intel system. It used AMD, to be. I mean, thank God AMD yeah. existed. They made, they kept Intel yeah. honest. They kept yep. them competitive. They forced Intel to go to Israel, and and and, yep. and get some better designs. But at this point, I think has Intel lapped AMD. Um, yeah, it seems like that in a lot of cases, right? AMD still has competent parts out there. Um, you know, their top end parts compete in the Core i5 range, uh, not so much in the right. Core i7 range. And they put out a, a, a little bit of information that just this week actually about what processors I they heard. recommend yeah. for uh, VR. Right, right. And then they actually had to go recant themselves oh. a little bit. I don't know if maybe Oculus came back and said actually no on a couple of things. Like <laughs> some of their APUs got taken off of that list. Ooh, wow. Right. So, <laughs> I, you know, I'm, we're hopeful I'm, for AMD next year uh, at the end of yeah. this year with the new architecture. Yeah. But, uh, there's nothing wrong with it, but if I were building a system today, it would be it would be a Skylake part for sure. AMD's okay, but it's not enough for. Play that thing again. <laughs> the ultimate VR gaming machine. <laughs> All right, Ryan. <laughs> Ryan Shroud. We'll have you back next week, and everybody should watch this week in computer hardware every week. And of course, go to PCPer.com for more information. Next week. The GPU. All this is giving me the shakes back to my old gaming days. I know, yeah, it's, it's so like, fun. Motherboard, motherboard, motherboard. I even wore an old screensaver <laughs> shirt with PCs on it. Different, not really the PCs of today, but. <laughs> uh, will there be a CD-ROM on the Ultimate? Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. I, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, probably not. Uh -huh. Thank you, Ryan. It's great to see you. Congratulations Thanks, on the new baby, by the way. Thank you very That's much, sir. That's awesome. That's awesome. Take care. Oh, isn't that fun? It's exciting. It's pretty cool. You're VR, VR is the future, man. I mean, we, we, talk, we talk about it all about Android all the time because there's so many with, with Google Cardboard yeah. and things like that. To see what Oculus is doing is just like I'm, I can't wait to see you know, what this machine looks like and what I the experience is. I should ask Ryan, can we run two VR helmets on this thing? Probably well, not. With all that power, you'd hope. I got to. Yeah. No. If you have enough USB ports. Ryan? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we need more monkeys! <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, Ryan Shreddy. For, for those of you listening, he came back and went, was, shook his head no. It was well done.